Okay, we are live and I am very excited to be here with you today. This is the Light of the Infinite Festival, an entire online festival that is here to inspire you. And if you don't know anything about it, you should check it out. Light of Infinite Festival. It's incredible. Okay, what are we teaching today? We are talking about the 10 habits of love. Rabbi Michael Stern of Blessed Memory was a, our rabbi who married us, beloved and dear friend and teacher and educator. And we value him so much. And he, he lives with us in our hearts. He taught a class called the 10 Habits of Love. And I was learning with Rabbi and I'm like, Rabbi, we've got it. Like, this is a book. This is like, this information is amazing. I love it. I'm so inspired by this information. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get to it. He said, I've got notes. And he sent me a document. Now, some people write a speech and there's notes, you know, two, three pages of notes. I think there's over 35 pages of notes. I'm like, Rabbi, Rabbi, what? <laughs> Where's, what are the 10 habits? He goes, aha, like that's the good question, Eliza. What are the 10 habits? I said, no, no, I'm serious. I want to know what the 10 habits are. And he uses stories to talk about the habits. And then he says, well, what do you think are the habits? And he starts to pull things from people. I said, no, Rabbi, you can't advertise a class and call it the 10 habits of love without having the actual habits. I said, okay, I'm going to work with the material. I'm going to like pare it down. I'm going to pull some stuff out. I'm going to put it into Aliza language. And I want to teach the class also. Um, and it, yes, no problem. But, you know, Aliza, it's not really exactly 10 habits. I said, okay, okay, but I'm, I'm going to give it over as 10 habits. So Rabbi Michael Stern of Blessed Memory is living with us in our hearts. He is not here today, but this class is entirely dedicated in his memory and in his honor. And uh, here we go. The 10 Habits of Love. I consider this what I call a revolu revolutionary approach to relationships. Now, what's revolutionary about the 10 Habits of Love? Like, really, Elisa? There's lots of things you could do for love. What's so revolutionary? The revolutionary part is in the first two habits, okay? Habit number one, loving yourself, okay? In Judaism, we know that there is a quote that says, kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, let's break this down. Love your neighbor. Good. Should you love your neighbor? Do you love your neighbor? Loving your neighbor is a good idea. No, no, no. Love your neighbor. Ooh, commandment. You're telling me to do something. This is active. Okay, how shall I love my neighbor? Teach me as yourself. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me that before I can even love my neighbor, I have to love myself. I have to know how to love myself. I have to come to love myself. Loving myself is actually habit number one. Self-love. If it starts with me, if I know how to do it for me, then I probably could also figure out how I can do this for you. That is really important and that is really key. Love your neighbor as yourself. So let's talk about self-love here, okay? <sighs> love is an obligation. You're obliged to do this. This is what you need to do in life to be successful. How do we love ourselves? What do we actually do to have a loving relationship with ourselves? The root of the word love in Hebrew, ahava, hav is the root, and the root of that means give. Loving starts by giving. And when we give to another, or we give to ourselves, we start to develop love. So loving ourselves starts with giving to ourselves first. You know when you get on the airplane and you sit down, <laughs> and the stewardess in the middle of the aisle gives over the whole thing, right? And when the oxygen mask drops down, make sure to put it over your head first before your friend. Why? Because you might keel over before you could get it on your child or your neighbor or your friend if you're so busy trying to love them, but you haven't taken care of yourself first. If there's no oxygen there, if there's no breathing mask for you, it's not going to work. You can't help anybody else in the world. You can't love, support, be there for anybody else in the world 
unless you're there for yourself first. That's number one. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's extremely, extremely important, and it's the number one thing that we need to do in the 10 Habits of Love. Now, how are you going to go about loving yourself? Many different ways to do it, and there's many different examples, and it really depends on who you are, and it really depends on what brings you joy. You can love yourself by taking yourself out and doing an activity that you want to do. You can take a trip. You can take a day off. You can go to your favorite spot. You could take a walk on the beach. You can buy your favorite coffee. I don't care what it is. Give to yourself something, something physical, an experience, something that brings you joy. It's got to make you smile. It needs to make you smile. Loving yourself should be something that brings you a tremendous amount of joy and it makes you feel good. And you walk away from that experience going, that was great. I really enjoyed that. That was exactly what I needed. That's what loving ourselves is all about. Now, habit number two, love your neighbor. Now we know how to love our neighbor. How should we love them? How do we love another person? Oh, as yourself, in the same way we're going to love ourselves. So what do we learn? That we give to ourselves. And when we give to ourselves, we grow love for ourselves. When we give to other people in the world, we're going to grow our love for other people in the world as well. So this means we can give of our time and our effort. We can give of our money. We can give of our stuff. We can loan things out. We can give things out. We can be there for somebody emotionally. We can listen to somebody. We can take them somewhere. We can do something. We can have an experience. There's so many different ways we can give. Now, here's the interesting part. Loving yourself means doing all those things that bring you joy. Loving your neighbor means doing all those things that bring them joy. Okay? So, we are not talking about doing things that bring you joy with your neighbor, so to speak. Whether it's your neighbor, your friend, somebody in your family, we're using that as the generic term neighbor. Okay? This other. The other person. So, we need to love them in the way that they need to be loved. Now, have you ever heard of Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages? Fantastic book, and it goes through five different ways that we receive and or give love to people. Often the same way we want to give is the same way we want to receive love. So for example, one of the areas is gift giving. Some people love gifts, it makes them so happy. I'm not a gift person. I'll receive a gift. Of course, I'll be happy. I'll say thank you. It's not my love language. Words of affirmation, saying something that's encouraging, positive, uplifting to me, that's a 10. That is just the highest form of love and affection that you can give to me. But my friend, I have a very beloved friend, she is a gift person. She gives gifts. She loves to receive gifts. It brings her a tremendous amount of joy. She's always very happy. And it's, it's totally her love language. So when I want to love her or express love to her, I need to give a gift. That's a way that she receives it very, very well. For other people, it might be quality time. For some people, it might be physical touch. They might need you to, you know, pat them on the shoulder, give them a hug, or be there for them in a moment. It doesn't matter what it is, but loving somebody else means you have to love them, but in the way that they need to be loved. That's what's really important about it. We have to tap into what works for them, what drives them, what is going to bring them a tremendous amount of joy and help them to feel really loved by you. Okay, hang on one second. We're gonna take a breather here as we get to the next one. Okay, the next one, the next habit is focusing on points of connection. Okay, I love this, okay? You're noticing a theme here with the language, the habit of loving, right? It's not I love you. Love is a statement. Loving is an action. Habits need to be actions. They need to be moving, okay? So focusing on points of connection. This is a habit of love. Okay, I'm going to show you a little thing that I put together here. It's very nothing. <laughs> okay, two circles. 
this is me and this is you. You is this other person that I'm going to love, okay? When we focus on loving ourselves, right, we're all in this bucket. When we focus on loving somebody else, we're all in this bucket. But when we're focusing on points of connection, it needs to look like this. You and I are connected and a habit of love is focusing on right here what's in the middle. A habit of focusing on what's in the middle will help us to focus on where we have a point of connection. Now, if I focus on over here and you're over here and I'm over here, I'm gonna be focusing on our differences. When I focus on our differences, I don't feel closer to you. What brings me closer to you or anybody else in the world is right here. It's what we have in common. What we have in common is the key factor to building the connection, to having love that exists between us. Because when I see similarities between us, I feel more connected to you. I feel more love for you. I feel more understanding, more compassion. There's so many things that I feel in that moment because I'm focusing on the things where we connect. So the third habit of love is focusing on all of the points of connection that you and this other person have. Really, really, really important. Okay, we're up to number four. Very exciting. Number four is being your person's number one fan. Whoever it is, it can be a romantic relationship, it can be a sibling, it can be a friend, it can be a coworker. When we're talking about 10 habits of love, loving anybody in the world, it doesn't matter who we are talking about, we're talking about building and growing love. That's my area of expertise. I work as a dating and relationship coach. I mostly work with singles or couples who are looking to build and grow their relationship, okay? So number four is being somebody's number one fan. Okay, I have a few notes here. What does it mean to be somebody's number one fan? It means that here we go. I, have, I pulled up a little definition. If you're a fan of someone or something, especially a famous person, a sport, somebody, somebody in your life, anybody, then you A, like them very much, and B, you are interested in them. Okay? How often do we hang around other people, we spend time with other people, not really super interested, like uh, I'm not interested in the same things you're interested in. Ugh, what did we do? Well, we didn't do number three, which was points of connection. We only found differences, not similarities. And number four is being their number one fan. You've got to be interested in them. Imagine a sports team, okay? Super Bowl just happened. I live in Israel now, but I'm from Philadelphia, okay? We were in the Super Bowl. Yay, right? Number one fan. What does a number one fan do? A number one fan cheers them on. A number one fan is excited. A number one fan doesn't care if you lose. Because even if you lose, I'm your number one fan. I'm not going anywhere. You are mine and I am yours. And like we are, we are one. It's as if I'm on the team. It's as if I am the team with you because I am your number one fan. I believe in you as much as I believe in me. I'm, I am all in. And when you're all in, that is a habit of love. Whoever you are surrounded, whoever you're around, whoever you're trying to connect with, you are going to feel so loved. I mean, really so loved. Cheering somebody on, being by their side, even when they're losing, even when something's not going their way, even when things aren't right. When you are somebody's number one fan, you are going to make them feel like a million bucks. And when they feel like a million bucks, then they are going to feel like you love them. They're going to feel like you love them. And this is the 10 habits of love, so that's a really good thing. <laughs> it means we hit our goal. Okay, here we go. Number five, seeing virtues. Okay, okay, you're noticing a theme here. I'm going to give you a little review. Loving yourself, loving, I-N-G. Loving others, loving, okay? Being their number one fan, being action-oriented, action-oriented, we're making things happen. Seeing virtues, seeing somebody's greatness. What does that mean, seeing somebody's greatness? 
Okay, being your number one fan just means I love you no matter what, good, bad, other, anything. It doesn't matter. Seeing somebody's greatness means I know what you did wrong. I know where you made mistakes. I know what happened in life. I choose to look at you with eyes of seeing your greatness. I choose to look where you shine. I choose to look where you're happy. I choose to look where you make an effort in this world and you make a difference in this world. And I choose to look at you with eyes of awe and I see your greatness. Everybody has something good within them. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your economic status. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. None of these things really matter. What matters is what are my eyes able to see? And if you're not able to see clearly, I want you to put on your special seeing glasses, the greatness glasses. When you put on your greatness glasses, you can look around at almost anybody in this world and you could find something fantastic about them. Let's give some examples. Let's say you meet somebody and uh, they don't look so nice. Maybe they don't even smell so nice. You don't even want to really be around them, okay? Are we seeing their greatness? We haven't seen anything great yet, not with our eyes. Then they open their mouth and they say something to you. And actually what they said was very kind. It was very warm, very loving. Ah, okay, they didn't look good with my eyes. They didn't smell good. You know what, but my ears heard something good. And when I hear something good, now I just recognize their greatness. These other things exist, but if we focus on the things that we don't feel a connection to, that we don't value, that we don't appreciate about somebody, we will always stay in a place of lacking love for them. But when we see their greatness, when we connect to them, now we feel love for them. We feel love for them doesn't matter how they look and it doesn't matter how they smell. It just matters that they were able to say something that touched your heart and that warmed your heart. And that's seeing their greatness. That's seeing their virtues. That's seeing somebody with real vision. And that's part of the habits of love. I'm going to read this. This is uh, a quote from Rabbi Michael Stern that says, Love is the pleasure you get when focusing on the virtues of others. Effortless love is called infatuation. In biblical Hebrew, there's not even a word for infatuation because it's not real. It's totally fake. If you don't see anything wrong with somebody, you're totally infatuated. You're totally overcome by emotion. We should see things that are wrong with people. None of us are perfect. There's always something wrong, but even though we see it, it's just not what we're choosing to focus on. We're going to choose instead to focus on somebody's greatness. And by focusing on their greatness, we are going to develop love for them. And by continuously focusing on somebody's greatness over and over again, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, we are going to develop a lot of love for them. And they're going to feel great, and we're going to feel great. Number six. Number six is all about awareness, okay? You have to be in the habit of having your eyes open. You have to be very clear about what you're seeing, and you have to notice, what am I doing that's bothering other people? <clears throat> when you want to love and care for somebody, you probably don't want to bother them so much. It's not going to create very loving feelings if you're constantly creating friction and you're constantly irritating a relationship, right? When you put on a pair of shoes, are you going to buy them if they keep rubbing against your heel? No, because you're going to have a blister. What are you going to do? You're going to find a different pair of shoes. If you're hanging out with a friend, and they're constantly causing challenge with you. Are you going to choose them as a friend? No, you're probably not gonna hang around them very much. So having an awareness is really important. And when we know what we're doing that bugs other people, we have to get into the habit of 
stopping annoying behaviors. That's right. <laughs> We are totally stopping annoying behaviors. And when we stop our annoying behaviors, we are going to be able to love somebody even more. It is a form of love by holding back and by not doing what bothers you because I want to love you because I want to show you a different side of myself. Okay. Judging favorably, number seven. Judging favorably is really a difficult thing to do. <clears throat> Let's create a scenario. Your best friend forgot your birthday. Completely forgot. Now you stayed silent. You're not one of those like make a big deal things. They didn't happen to see any of the reminders on their calendars or social media, nothing. They were totally quiet and everything completely went dark. And you are going, what's wrong with them? Like, we're friends for 15 years. You don't know when my birthday is. I make a big deal out of your birthday. I take you out. I do something for you. You can't even remember my birthday? I can't believe this. What is going on? This is ridiculous. You call them on the phone. You know what? I, I, we're friends for so long. What's wrong with you? It's my birthday. You should have done something, right? You start to flip out. <laughs> Not a very nice thing to do. Not a very loving thing to do. What should you have done in that moment? You judge favorably. Maybe you want to call and say, oh, I know you're so busy, but uh, it's my birthday. Do you want to celebrate? Okay. Judge favorably. Judge favorably. Use your soft eyes and kind words. Judge favorably. If you think somebody made a mistake or did something wrong, that don't assume that somebody's coming at you or coming after you. Loving behaviors, habits of loving behaviors, one of them is judging favorably, right? Who knows? That friend that you just reamed out and yelled at might go, okay, well, I'm going to ruin the surprise so you don't think that I'm a total jerk. I need you a surprise party. And remember, I'm meeting you like in an hour to like hang out. We're not hanging out. There's really a big party, okay? All of a sudden, you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> what did I do, right? What you did was you didn't judge favorably. What you did is you were super judgmental and you didn't give your friend the benefit of the doubt. Habit number seven is judging favorably. And when you do it, everybody wins. Habit number eight is unconditional giving. Okay? Now, I'm not giving to you because I want to get something back. I'm giving to you because when I give, I grow love. And when I grow love for you, then we can have a better connection and a better relationship. Also, when I receive, right, we're going to grow our love. Why? Because that gives you an opportunity to be a giver. You know how some people, they don't want to receive a gift, right? You come over to them and you're like, oh, I bought you this new thing and, and here it is. It's for you. Like, no, no, I'm good. I, I, have, I have things already. I, I don't need that. I'm okay. You're okay? You know what you just did? You just ruined the potential for love to grow. There was a moment right there when they handed you something. Had you received it and said thank you, you would have built love because they had an opportunity to give. Now, I'm not saying that we should, you know, always be overjoyed that somebody's giving us something and it's not what we want. And, but I'm saying if you want to grow love, you should receive with joy, no matter what it is. Even if it's not something that you love, you can still receive and say thank you as opposed to turning someone or something away. Somebody opens the door for you. No, no, I got it. Let them open the door for you. It's an act of love. It's an act of kindness. It grows and builds your connection. Somebody wants to take you out for a cup of coffee. No, I got it. Let's split it. We'll go half and half. Why? So you should love yourself more and I should love myself more? No, I want to treat you. Let me take you out. Things like this make a really big difference, really big difference when we are trying to grow love, when we are trying to build, when we are trying to connect with somebody else at a really deep level. And it takes all of this effort. Number nine, number nine is the habit of practicing oneness. Okay, I'm gonna tell you about oneness. My husband and I normally, 
if we go out for the evening and there's an event, let's say, happening in town, what happens? We drive to the event together, we get it, you know, we arrive, we get out of the car, he goes, he schmoozes with the people he knows, I schmooze with the people that I know, maybe we sit down at the table together wherever we are doing whatever with a whole group of people, fine, fine, we talk to the people that we each know, right? At the end of the night, we get back in the car, we go home, and we say, how was your evening? Why? Because I have no idea what just happened, because I didn't spend the evening with him. We went together, but we didn't do anything together. Habit number eight is the habit of practicing oneness. So I made up rules one night. I said, honey, I've got an idea. He's like, okay, what's the game? I said, we are going to go to an event. We are not going to leave each other's side. The whole night, we are going to be in the same conversation circle. Where you go, I go. He said, okay. So we walk in. I have to check my code in. Okay, we go together. We check the code in together. Well, where would you like to go? I don't know. Let's go to where the hors d'oeuvres are. Okay, we go to where the hors d'oeuvres are. Okay, I like the sushi. He likes the meat. <laughs> he wants the carving station. I want the sushi. He says, you know what? Okay, we're going together, right? Not like, oh, I'll meet you later. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, let's go get some sushi. So we go to get sushi. Very nice. He, he let me go first. Then somebody walks over to us and we start to have a conversation. And I notice he's not super interested in the conversation. That's not really his speed. So I politely excuse us from that conversation. Then we go to the carving station. He gets what he likes. We have another conversation with somebody else. I'm not super interested. We kind of leave that conversation. Then he says, oh, I'll go grab you a drink. And he's like, oh, wait, you'll come with me. We go together from the carving station to get a drink. We grab a drink. We schmooze. We talk. We go into the dinner, the whole event, we're sitting at the table, and instead of having our backs to each other and talking to our friends, we're sitting there side by side talking to each other and including one or two friends in the conversation. I get up to go to the bathroom, <laughs> he follows me, and I'm like, no, no, I gotta go to the bathroom. He goes, I'll wait right here, right outside. I was like, oh, very good, very good. <laughs> and a woman walks into the bathroom and she goes, you know, your husband is waiting outside of the bathroom for you. I said, I know, I know. We're practicing oneness. <laughs> we leave the event. We get in the car to go home. And on the way home, I'm thinking, well, how was, I'm thinking to ask, like, how was your evening? The typical question. And I went, no, oh, I don't really need to ask that. I already know. We spent the evening together. It was so delightful. And every so often we practice and go on dates where we do the habit of oneness instead of doing our own thing as we go around events. That's number eight. No, that's number nine. Hold on. That was number nine. <laughs> number 10. Number 10 is the habit of maintaining your relationship, okay? With the effort comes the reward, okay? Don't complain, just maintain. Don't complain, just maintain. This is habit number 10. No complaining about hard it, how hard it is to have your relationship work. No complaining about how difficult it is to keep up with everything on a daily basis, to build this loving relationship with this person. Don't complain, just maintain. Maintaining it means repeating all of the nine steps above that we talked about and doing it over and over again, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And when you do those things, you will build a relationship that will sustain, that will last an entire lifetime, whether it's with a partner or a friend or a coworker or with a family member. It doesn't matter who you want to build this amazing, loving, wonderful relationship with. But you can do it through these 10 habits and through these actions. And by habits, I mean actions. You've got to be in action. It's not, I love you. My husband and I, we do say I love you, like in passing, in passing. But what we really say to each other is, I'm loving you. Now, for all of you gram grammatical people out there that want to criticize grammar on this statement, it's not correct. And at the same time, it's perfectly correct. I'm loving you means 
I am doing something to show my love for you, to give my love to you, to build my love with you, for you, because I believe in our relationship, because I love our relationship, because I want to grow our relationship and make it something that can withstand the test of time. I want to wrap up and I want to say a special thank you to everyone who has watched this. I want to say a special thank you to the infinite, the light of the infinite. I want to say a special gratitude to Rabbi Michael Stern of Blessed Memory who allowed me uh, before he passed, we talked about it. I told him I'm modifying it, I'm editing it, I'm making it a Lisa language, who's allowed me to develop this concept and to share it with all of you. God willing, one day this will be a book and there will be more meaningful co content on the 10 Habits of Love so that we can grow and build our love to last a lifetime. I hope everybody has a fantastic evening.